Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth inter... Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We are in the middle of a wonderful series on oneness in Christ. Our topic today, unity in faith. Now, I'm sure we won't agree about everything, but there are these great themes of the Bible that bring us together, oneness in Christ. I'm sure you'll be blessed, and we welcome you to Hope Sabbath School. And welcome to the team. Good to be together. I am being so blessed by this series. I think part of it is... The Spirit is calling me to that oneness with Him that enables me to have oneness with others. Does that make sense? We, we just can't fabricate it without Him, can we? And we're glad that you're all part of our Hope Sabbath School family. We, uh, whenever we receive an email from you, we smile because we're happy you're part of our family. Here is a, a Amiri, a Jamaican living in North Carolina. Nicole, big smile, Jamaica. All right. Yes, Amiri writes and says, hello, my name is Amiri, and I just turned 12. Oh. Amen. I'm originally from Jamaica, but currently living in North Carolina. Every week, my mom and I tune in to listen to Hope Sabbath School. Uh, through you, I've learned more than I ever would have just studying by myself. <laughs> I would like to thank you for all your work to spread the word of God. Please keep it up. All right. Amen. That's awesome, isn't it? Thanks for writing to us, Amari. And we're glad that you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. The youngest person we've heard from so far, I think, was two and a half uh, reading the Bible while we were having the class. And the oldest is 101. So we're glad that you're all part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Jerry and Deniki write from Tasmania. We're so blessed by the whole team and the love of God that oozes from you all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, the week would not be complete without you. Uh, we regard you as family. By the time you receive this, we will be members of the local Adventist church. Amen. Amen. After two and a half years of studying the scriptures and listening to Bible messages, we realize the gospel truth is being presented from Genesis to Revelation in its entirety with Jesus at the center of it. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Richest blessings to all of you from the small island of Tasmania below Australia. Well, we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Thanks so much for writing to us. Here's a note from a donor in Florida. Send a check for $30. That can help. We're all part of the team, a donor-based ministry. Thank you for Hope Sabbath School and the other wonderful programs proclaiming the Word of God. I watch you on Roku. May God continue to bless your ministry, yours in Christ. Well, thanks. Uh, you know who you are. Thanks for being part of this miracle called Hope Sabbath School. Here's a note from Bualia. Bualia. That's a, not a name I'm familiar with. <laughs> B-W-A-L-Y-A. Bualia. He is a Zambian studying in North Africa. He says, Bonjour. Salam Aleikum. That's an Arabic greeting. Mm -hmm. Salam Aleikum. Mm -hmm. Salam Aleikum. Greetings to all Hope Sabbath School members. Greetings. Greetings. I'm a Zambian student in Algeria. I live in a province which has no church at all. I was deeply disturbed by, by this fact until the Lord led me to a group of other devout Adventist students who've helped me to understand many biblical principles I had no idea about. Mm -hmm. I follow Hope Sabbath School each week. Amen. Amen. And I deeply appreciate the way you've helped me to see God, not as an abstract idea, but rather a personal being who wants a relationship with me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it, isn't it? Amen. That's it. I'm a singer, and I love scripture songs too. I like to imagine God smiling whenever those melodies rise to his throne. Though being a Christian in this country is not easy, I can say that I'm learning more about Jesus here than I ever did in my own country, thanks to Hope Sabbath School. Amen. Praise, God. Praise God. Pray for me to be a light to those around me always. 
and God bless you. Well, thanks so much for writing to us, Bualia. And uh, let that light of Jesus shine through you. One last note from Ebenezer in Ghana. Anyone with Ghanaian roots? Oh, whoa, three hands just went up. (laughs) All right, Charity and Joshua and Samuel. I really enjoy your inspiring interactions, Ebenezer writes. Please do continue to educate us on the Bible truth to help others like me get the in-depth analysis of the true gospel. Thank you and God bless you all. Well, thanks for writing to us, Ebenezer. Whether you're in New Zealand or Ghana or North Africa, wherever you are, we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. Why don't you write to us at sshope at hopetv.org. And I'm excited. We've got lots of other resources on our website. We're just starting to offer some new Bible studies. We'd like to invite you. You can go to hopebiblestudy.org and you can learn about more Bible study resources. I really believe the Bible is the living Word of God, don't you? It's a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And right now we're going to sing a scripture song based on Ephesians chapter 4, 1 to 3. It says, I therefore beseech you to walk... How? Worthy of the calling with which you were called. We're not saved by the way we walk. We're saved by the grace of Jesus. Ephesians 2 tells us. But in Ephesians 4 it says, live a life worthy of the calling. And part of that is oneness in Christ. A unity that only comes through being connected with Him. Let's sing the theme song together. I therefore beseech you. While we were singing, I was thinking of Bulwa. Is that the, how I said the name correctly? From, from North Africa? Mm-hmm. Bualia. Bualia. Sorry about that, Bualia. <laughs> I'm thinking he's singing there in North Africa Ooh, yeah. and saying, Jesus, I want to shine for you. Amen? Amen? Amen. All across the planet, 150 countries that we know of, people are saying, Lord, I want to walk worthy of the calling, saved by your grace. And today, unity in faith. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to be part of this global family, in-depth, interactive study of your word. And Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to study your word today, to share testimony, to connect with our sisters and brothers around the world. May the Holy Spirit guide in our discussion. May your name be honored in us and through us. 
we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, I was noticing that quite a few of you have this Andrews Study Bible. And I just want to thank the Andrews University Press for supporting Hope Sabbath School because many of you are blessed by this study Bible. And if you're looking for a great study Bible, the only reason I have this on my desk, in fact, I prepare the Hope Sabbath School outlines with this Andrews Study Bible. But the only reason I'm not using it when I'm teaching is it's too heavy for me. (laughs) So I've only got a little hand. So I have a slightly smaller Bible, but great resource. And I'm glad some of you are using it. You know, the Bible is just such a precious gift. Let's never take it for granted. Never take it for granted. Well, let's go into our study today of salvation, of unity in faith, and start with salvation in Jesus. And, And what I want you to take away from our study is we may not have exactly the same understanding of every single thing in the Bible. You know, we're not saved by our knowledge We're saved by our relationship with Jesus. Now, does he want us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior? Absolutely. So that's why we have Hope Sabbath School. But there are general themes that we can see in the Bible that bring us together. So let's start with salvation. And I'm going to ask uh, Joshua if you'd start our study today. In Acts chapter 4, powerful testimony from the Apostle Peter, verses 8 through 12. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. So there's much we could learn about salvation, but if we could summarize the way of salvation in one word, Jamie, one word would be? Grace. grace and Jesus. I guess two words yeah. <laughs> or three, the grace of Jesus, right? Yeah. Which is the grace of the Father yeah. and of the Holy Spirit and the Son all in action in the plan of salvation. Uh, stay with the voice of Peter. Samuel, could you read in, for us in Acts 10 and verse 43? Peter now is speaking to Cornelius and he's reinforcing the centrality of Jesus uh, in the plan of salvation. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 43. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission Mm. of sins. All right. So what happens when we believe in Jesus as our Savior? Mm. That's right. We say, Jesus, I can't deal with my own sin because the wages of sin is. But you have dealt with that sin problem and Through faith in you, I can receive the remission or forgiveness of my sins. Now, in another text, it says he not only forgives us, but he He cleanses us. us. Someone say hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not just, yeah, I'm forgiven. You know, it's all all dirty here. He actually (laughs) wants to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we can walk in a new and pure life in him. It's such a beautiful, beautiful promise. Well, let's keep going. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 18 and 19 And I see Jason. Here we got two Jasons. So I'm going to point Jason low and Jason up, okay? We've got two Jasons. Uh, Jason, if you could read for us uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verses 18 and 19. Here the Apostle Paul gives his testimony. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself, through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. You know, some people have the idea that Jesus, the incarnate Son of God, is on our side and the Father isn't. 
What do you learn from that text? Yeah. They're working together. Yeah. They're working together. And the Holy Spirit too, right? Because the Holy Spirit leads us to faith in Jesus mm -hmm. and then empowers us to be his witnesses. witnesses. That's right, Kenneth. So, I mean, the whole Godhead is not trying to keep us out of an eternal joy with him, mm -hmm. but to draw us to him. Well, the same Apostle Paul that wrote, Travis, to uh, the Corinthian church wrote to the Romans too. And I wonder if you could read for us. This, this is a very strong and powerful testimony, Romans 10, verses 9 through 13. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says... Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Is that it, Nicole? Just whoever calls on the name of the Lord? That's what it says. That's what it says. <laughs> it's not the end of the journey, is it? No. It's, beginning. it's beginning. It's the beginning. That's right. But it is the way of salvation. Amen. calling upon the name of the Lord. Why is that so important? Jamie, could you read for us in Romans chapter 3, verses 24 and 25? Yes. The New American Standard Bible says, Being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Jesus Christ, whom God displayed publicly as the propitiation in His blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. Mm. Mm. So what, what's the theme you're hearing so far in all of the texts we're reading? Jesus. Jesus, yes. that's right. <laughs> you know, I think it was C.S. Lewis. Um, he did a series of broadcasts uh, during the Second World War, before I was born. But I have, but, so I didn't hear them, but I have read the little book, Mere Christianity, which is the compilation of some of those. And in those, Lewis says, you know, people have these heated arguments over how Jesus saves us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could we just agree that he does? Yeah. Yeah. Could we agree that maybe when we get to the kingdom of heaven and the earth made new that we'll be learning throughout eternity the depths of the mm. love and grace mm. of God. Amen. Uh, I, think, I think what I'm hearing here, we'll look at one last verse in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 24, that when we meet uh, a fellow Christian, we may have some differences on the other mm -hmm. issues, that we ought to experience a unity, a oneness in Christ mm -hmm. because we believe we are saved through Jesus. Through Jesus, our Savior and Lord, right? Yeah. And maybe even to those who don't know anything about Christianity, when they say, well, how are you saved? We can say, by calling upon the name of the Lord. And they can say, well, what does that mean? And we can explain that, right? Mm -hmm. Let's look in First Peter chapter 2. Gladys, could you read for us verses 21 to 24? Sure. I'm reading from the New King James Version, First Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit, deceit found in his mouth, who, when he was revealed, did not reveal in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously." who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Kenneth, is like you said, it's not the end, it's the beginning, right? Yeah. We, 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 we die to sin that we might live to righteousness, to righteousness, righteousness. right? Mm -hmm. So if we took one theme and said, this is something that unites us in faith, it is that we are saved by the grace of God through Jesus, through, Jesus, yeah. through mm -hmm. faith in Jesus. But we have a choice to make yeah. mm -hmm. yes. because it says we need to, mm -hmm. what was that text in Romans 10? We need to confess. confess. Conf we need to actually call upon oh, the name oh, of the yeah. Lord, right? Mm -hmm. We need to confess our sins too, but to mm -hmm. and to confess with our mouth, right? Mm -hmm. That he is our savior. Mm 
Jesus, save me. Amen. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. We're going to live for him the rest of our days. For the thief on the cross who said, Lord, Lord, remember me. Mm -hmm. He just had that day to stop cursing. Amen. Right? Amen. Not saved by not cursing, but stop cursing his Savior and called upon his name. Amen. Amen. So if, if you're studying with us today, just one thing that brings us together, it is uh, salvation in Jesus. But let's go on to a second uh, theme as we talk about unity in faith. And that is the teaching of the Bible about the second coming of Jesus. Charity, if you could read what for some may be a very familiar text in John 14, mm -hmm. one of my favorites, yeah. verses 1 to 3, but someone may be hearing it for the very first time. They may have grown up hearing about Jesus, but have no idea what Jesus is going to tell us in this text. Yeah. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. 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 Clear teaching of Jesus. Mm. Do you know, I was taking a class. It was at a, a, a Protestant seminary. I was taking a class, and I heard someone say, well, of course, we can't take that seriously. I mean, that's not possible for him to come back. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I had a pastor turn to me and say to me, Derek, I wish my church still believed in the Bible like you do. Oh, no. Wow. Because Jesus said, He's I'm coming back yeah. again. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. He describes it. Let's look in Matthew chapter 24. Kenneth, could you read for us Matthew 24, verses 26 and 27? Mm. Matthew 24. We're looking at the words of Jesus, and then we're going to look at the words of a couple of angels. That's pretty dependable, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kenneth, read for us, if you would, Matthew 24, 26 and 27. So I'll be reading from the King James Version. So Matthew 24, verse 26 through to 27, it says, Wherefore, if they say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. For, for as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm. Mm. Do you know, just yesterday, someone told me that a relative of theirs was going to a church and said, the leader of our church is the Messiah. <laughs> yeah, he's returned. And he's pastoring our church. Wow. Mm. <laughs> what, did, what did Jesus say? Mm -hmm. no, if they no, say go to the secret room. Do don't go. Don't go. Or, oh, by the way, he's in the desert. Don't go. Because don't don't go. Go. you'll see him when he comes. That's right. Like lightning. Yeah. I don't know what part of the world you live in. Do you have lightning? We have lightning here mm -hmm. in the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. Lightning f can light up the sky. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Like lightning from the east to the west. That's what the coming of the Son of Man will be. It, does it startle you that there might be someone today thinking he's mm -hmm. in a room somewhere here in... No. Mm -hmm. no. Jesus said... He, he, Jesus he actually said made two statements regarding there. The first one is, don't even go there. Don't go there. Even though you don't physically go there, don't even believe it. Ah, you know? okay. Mm -hmm. Don't believe it and don't go there. Exactly. Just to check it out? No, because no. <laughs> we know it's not true already. Exactly. Yeah. Revelation 1... Uh, reinforces that teaching. Laurel, if you have, could find Revelation 1 and verse 7 for us, the fact that the, the coming of Jesus will not be some secret thing that we have to get a text on our phone that says, oh, he's in New York. You know, let's all go to New York. Laurel, chapter 1, verse 7 of Revelation, what does it say? I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is to be. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. By the way, and we could get into the whole topic, but not everybody will be ready when Jesus mm. comes. Mm. Apparently, some will be 
mourning, mourning, mourning. mourning or wailing. Gnashing of teeth. Later in Revelation, it says they're crying for the rocks fall to fall, fall on them and hide them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The glory which to them is a consuming fire, to us is mm. a light. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Jesus is coming back. And notice what Laurel's read. How many will see him? Oh. Every, eye. Yeah. Every eye will see him. It's not going to be secret. Yes, Travis. I would also like to point out, and it says, Behold, he's coming with the clouds. That clouds is angels. Mm-hmm. He's going to be accompanied by thousands of angels. Amen. So he's not going to be alone. <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, we're going to read uh, from the book of Acts now, where it says a cloud received him out of their sight. And then he comes with clouds. So that you see, uh, Jason, up top. Up top. Yeah. <laughs> Read for us, uh, would you, from Acts chapter 1, oh, yeah. verses 9 through 11. Oh, it's beautiful. Bless. Jesus has just told them you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Yeah. Not the end, but the beginning, right? Amen. And you're going to be my witnesses where? Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Judea, yeah, Yeah, you can say et al, everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. What comes after that, uh, Jason, Acts 1, in verses 9 through 11? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and the Bible says, Now when he had spoken these words while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into Ooh. heaven. There's a lot of information there, isn't there, Gladys? What, what jumped out at you from the angels? What, what was an important truth they were conveying? He, I just like how they were so sure mm-hmm. that the same way that they are looking at, just they just put it in your mind, the same way that he left. He's coming back. It was an assurance. It was not, there was no doubt in their words. Why do you think the angels didn't just say, he's coming back again? Why so much information? Mm. Trisha Lee? It's good to be specific because, yes. you know, the apostles warned that there will be false Christ and false teachers. Mm-hmm. And people are waiting for Jesus to come back. We don't want it to be, uh, to be deceived. And so they give details so that we know what to look for when he's returning. Yeah. yeah, so there's some specific things that, that are mentioned by the angels. Travis? Mm-hmm. For every truth that, that God has, Satan has a counterfeit. Mm-hmm. And, and so I think he's writing specifically so that we're not duped, so that we're not fooled, that we, we know and we're prepared for this mm-hmm. amazing event. Anyone else? Something that jumps out at you as you hear the angels' testimony. Uh, for me personally, I like the fact when he said, this same Jesus. Mm-hmm. So in other words, mm-hmm. it's not a different Jesus that is coming to pick us up. Mm-hmm. It's the by, same one. Exactly. It's the same one that died on the cross, and it is the same one that created the universe in the beginning. So it is the same Jesus Christ mm. that we can experience salvation through. Beautiful. Amen. Uh, Jason he, up above. Yeah, in Hebrews it says that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. So it's the pattern when they said that, you know, he will come in the same manner that he left. So it's very specific the way that he left, he'll come back, as Travis was saying, you know, in the clouds, being angels. And, and that verb to see is there too. The yeah. way you saw him go. Yeah. It reinforces that every eye will see him, right? Yeah. But something else amazing, and I always have to remind myself that some people, maybe you're watching today, and you're like, this is totally new to me. There's something else remarkable that will happen when Jesus returns, Nicole, in First Thessalonians, if you could read that for us, verse, uh, chapter 4, verses 13 mm. through 18. I know you're going to be looking for some people on that day. Uh, and you know, it's not just, here's Jesus, we're saved, and we're going to be with him. Something else, let's see what it says. Uh, the New International Version of First Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 18 says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Amen. Amen. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Is that awesome? Yes. That is just such a beautiful promise. And again, to the person that says, Messiah's here, he's pastoring a little congregation, I'm going to say, where's the Evidence. resurrection, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, every I saw him, you were sleeping. No, no. no. Where's the <laughs> resurrection of the righteous? Yes. Where's that tr- trumpet sound and the call, call of the archangel? Yes. This is a phenomenal uh, climax of earth's history. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a question for you. We talked about salvation, right? in Jesus. We said, you know, let's not argue with each other about all of the details. Let's at least say, through Jesus, God has provided a way of salvation. Is that, yeah. Now, let's keep studying. Jason, Laura Jason, I want to ask you a question. Someone might say, well, can we just agree clearly that Jesus is coming back and not really concern ourselves with the details of that. Mm. I mean, exactly what it will be like. Because there are different views, aren't there? I mean, some people say, oh, that's a ridiculous idea, you can't come back. I, I reject that, mm. because Jesus said he's coming back. Mm. But what about whether you will all see him or whether it will be secret? Does that matter? What would you say? So... It's true. It's first important that we recognize that he is coming back. So it is important that we agree on that basic point. But it is also good for us to understand the how and the why, because if we don't always understand the how and the why, we can get confused. And if we can get confused, we may be led to believe something that's not true. The devil may lead us to a false teaching, and it is possible that our salvation it's, it sounds like a strong statement, but our salvation could be at risk if we open our minds to something that the Bible does not teach. And so it's not that we're automatically going to be lost, but it puts us in danger. In danger. Mm. Okay, so then let me ask another question. Is it possible that Christ will return? We've called upon his name. We're saved by his grace through faith. And it won't be exactly the way we thought it was going to be. Is that possible? Is yeah. that possible? Yeah. Yeah. Return? Yeah. 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 Maybe someone turns to me and says, I thought it was going to be like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought we were going to just disappear or whatever. And I might say, well, I thought it was like this, but I didn't know that was going to happen. <laughs> we're not saved by having all the details straight. Yeah. But we may be in danger. So yeah. let's see yes. what the Bible teaches. But remember that salvation is through Jesus. 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 Jesus right? Amen. Yes. Who of us... Let's take the second coming of Jesus as an example. Would say, well, I don't want to go because I didn't think it was going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not, Not I. 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 <laughs> We're going to be using my favorite Hebrew word, right? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, we've got to keep going in our study. I don't want to take a lot of time with Matthew 25, 1 to 13. It's the story of the ten virgins. <laughs> but the message is clear that not all who profess were saved all be saved are going to be ready right that's right right yep. now that's a bit troubling cuz that's uh, 50-50 right there and i don't want to say that that's the way it will be among professed followers of jesus but i want to ask a question and, and i would encourage you to read matthew 25 that that 10 virgin story because how many does the Lord want to be ready when he returns? Oh. Oh, you didn't hesitate, did you? <laughs> no. So I have a question, Trisha Lee. Maybe you can start our discussion and feel free to interact with us. In practical terms, what does it look like to be ready? Mm. Because Jesus says in Matthew 24, mm. be ready mm. for in such a time as you think not. Not that it's going to be a surprise, as in you won't be able to see it, but boom, it's here. What, in a practical terms, what does it mean to be ready? When we think about the lesson, the example of the virgins, they were all waiting in a certain location because there was a ceremony that was going to take place. So they were given some instructions that they had to follow. And we know that all, the, all eyes will see the Lord, and we know that we don't know when it's happening. But we have been given some instructions on what we should all be doing, united together, as we wait and prepare for Jesus to come. So the first step is to follow the instructions that allow us to be ready. Um, If we say that we're waiting for someone and we're not in the spot, we're not really waiting. 
So if Jesus tells us to prepare and we can talk about what that preparation is, then we should be doing those things. Okay. And, and we would all agree, and come to Jamie and Charity here, we would all agree that when it's happening, it's too late. Yes. Right? Too late. Yes. So, Jamie, this is practical, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, mm -hmm. be ready. Uh, what does that look like? And I think for me, you have the five foolish and the five wise. And the foolish are the ones that are relying on the faith of others, I think, symbolically. And the ones that have oil, they have that personal relationship with the Holy Spirit and Christ. And so they they brought extra oil to light the way because they're, they're light bearers, essentially. So not only is the oil for themselves, but to also sh share the light mm. when Jesus is coming so that others can know as well. Okay, so it's something to do with, uh, I, I, again, I, I, you're telling me one have kind of a s stale faith or a second-hand faith and, and the others have a living personal, faith, a yeah, personal, personal relationship, yeah. charity? My thoughts were similar to Jamie's, that to be in constant relationship constant with Jesus relationship. Okay. so that you recognize... <laughs> Say it again, charity. ...to be in constant <laughs> relationship with him mm, yes. so Amen. that you can recognize and also be renewed by him so that you do not tire as you watch and wait. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I'll come to you in just a minute. Constant relationship with Jesus. That's we're tweeting, right? Yes. Yes. Constant <laughs> relationship with Jesus. Because if I'm ready now, I'm ready then. then. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And someone has told me, you know, he may come Mm -hmm. Five years from now, but you're not sure you're going to make it home today, right? Exactly. Uh, don't live in fear, but constant relationship, relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. Gladys? Yes, it's because sometimes like when you are born and raised in the church, you live off of what you learn at home or the stories you heard in Sabbath school, mm. and you just go on fumes, like we, we sometimes say, we, you don't go really renewing that relationship. So, so let, me, living, let, let me yes. put that in, in other language for those who are second language, right? You're, some people have fuel in their engine yeah. and some people, the fuel's all gone and there's just fumes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How far will that take you? Not hard enough. Hard enough. And that, that's what the daily commitment to Christ every day. Mm. That's what makes a difference. That's what make you go the long run. Mm. But if you're just leaving, oh, I had an experience with God five years ago, mm. and that's mm -hmm. what keeps me going, mm. then how long would that really... That doesn't even work in a marriage, does it? No. <laughs> I had a relationship with my spouse five years ago. It doesn't work. <laughs> yes, Kenneth. I remember reading one a powerful statement once concerning about preparing for the end times, like for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And this, then, and this statement literally just blew me away. When I first read it, it says, if you're right with God today, then you are right, you're ready for Jesus Christ if he should come right now. Yes. Yeah. So if a person, you know, trying to figure out how they can be ready with Jesus Christ, just if you're, if you're right with God today, like right now, yes. you're ready for Jesus Christ if, if he should come even now. If you ask most people, would you like to be part of the kingdom of glory, most people would mm -hmm. say yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But the only way is to be part of the kingdom of grace now. now. Yes. Amen. It's now, isn't it? That's, that's the key lesson. Joshua, we've got, lots, we've got to move on to two other areas. Sure. Um, I know that we're taking this from a practical perspective. So some people may be wondering, what does it mean to be right with God? Yes. What does it mean to have a relationship with him? What does that look like? And at the end of the day, it's truly about your character. Like, how is it that we can treat our brothers or sisters in a negative way? Mm -hmm. Like, is your heart right with God? Mm -hmm. Because he's coming back for his children. Yes. So do you live and reflect yourself as a child of God? But I want to just say, and we're going to have to move on, that that is the fruit of yes, the constant yes, relationship, the constant relationship. Yes. right? Yes. That is the fruit. That is the evidence. Mm -hmm. If I don't see this happening, don't just try to make it happen more. Work on that living connection with Jesus. Does that make sense? Yeah. We're going to have to move on. Hopefully we'll have a little time later. It's good to have a lively discussion. What have we looked at so far? Well, we've looked at unity in faith, salvation in Jesus, that Jesus is coming back again. Amen. Yes. Let's look now at the ministry of Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary. And I'd like to start with um, Exodus chapter 25 and... 
Trisha Lee, could you read it? Verses 8 and 9, and then someone go to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 2, and we'll actually be staying in Hebrews 8 and 9. The ministry of Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary, that Jesus not only did something, God sent his son, came into humanity 2,000 years ago, lived, died for our sins, rose again, this same Jesus who ascended to heaven, right? Yes. What's he doing there is the question. Well, let's look in uh, Exodus 25, 8 and 9. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I show you. That is, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. Mm-hmm. Who's the Lord speaking to? Moses. To who? Moses. To Moses, that's right. Did someone find Hebrews chapter 8? Yes. Someone have that, Jamie? Mm-hmm. Verse 2. The New American Standard Bible says, A minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, not a man. Mm-hmm. The true tabernacle. All right. Someone read Hebrews 8 and verse 6, Laurel. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, Hebrews 8, verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by as much as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted on better promises. And chapter 9 of Still in Hebrews, Joshua, verses 11 and 12. And the Bible says, But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, Amen. having obtained eternal redemption. Mm. Amen. And Samuel, same chapter 9 of Hebrews, verses 23 to 28. Just hearing a theme that Christ is doing something on our behalf now. Um, chapter 9, verses uh, 11 to 12. 23 to 28. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. It says, Therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to, to put away sin by the sacrifices of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, But after this, the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. Mm -hmm. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. Mm -hmm. Nicole, I saw you smile when he read that. What he's doing now in the heavenly sanctuary is in preparation for the coming. First coming, right? Now, if you look at the gospel record during the ministry of Jesus, he prays for people. Mm -hmm. Can you think of times when Jesus prayed for people? Uh, Jason? In the book of John 17, verse, he prayed for himself first, then he prayed for his disciples. Absolutely. John 17 is a great example. Mm -hmm. He prays for himself, for his disciples, and then for all who will believe. Mm -hmm. Another time when Jesus says to one of his disciples, I prayed for you. you. Peter. Simon Peter, Peter, right? I prayed for you. Satan sought to sift you like wheat. And I prayed for you. With that in mind, someone read Hebrews 7.25. It's a beautiful, beautiful text. Hebrews 7... Jason, down here, 725, what does it say? I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Amen. Amen. So think about that. Charity, let me give you a chance to start. What is it, how does it impact you? to realize that your Savior is now in the heavenly sanctuary and he's 
praying for you. Mm. He's, mm. He's, he's, he's your advocate. He's on your side. He's interceding for you. It's everything. It's everything that um, he himself is praying a prayer that he himself will answer on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm not responsible for making this happen, but he's mm -hmm. taking care of me from the beginning to the end, preparing a place for me to be with him in his kingdom. And it is, it is my um, decision to walk with him. Mm -hmm. And it is a blessing and it, it relieves such responsibility that I must do all these things yeah. to get into the kingdom, which a lot of people mm -hmm. struggle with. Mm -hmm. what, is it, what is that ministry of Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary tell you about his thoughts toward you? He loves us. Huh? Mm -hmm. He loves Samuel? us. Samuel? I was just also going to say that um, Christ's ministry right now in the sanctuary, it changes my prayer life personally. Mm -hmm. Instead of prayer just being looking like a lonely experience, now it feels like a joint experience with Christ where my mm -hmm. prayers are being mingled with his prayers for me. Beautiful. Yeah. And Jason? I just have to say hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> In Revelation 12:10, it talks about the latter part. It says that Satan is accuser of the brethren. You know, mm -hmm. day and night he goes before mm -hmm. God, and it's just a great thought to know that Jesus goes even the more. You know, he ever liveth to intercede on our behalf even mm -hmm. the more in our in our stead because we are, are sinners, mm -hmm. but only saved by the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah, Amen. Huh? Amen. Trisha Lee. Um, being united in our understanding of the sanctuary also helps to address the cheap grace idea mm -hmm. that sin isn't important. If we understand what's happening from the whole sanctuary service, we know that sin is done away with mm -hmm. and that it, um, that's what Christ is doing for us right now. And so it, it helps us to remind ourselves that Jesus doesn't just save us to leave us the way we are, mm -hmm. but he's truly trying to transform us. He wants to justify us, cleanse us, but also sanctify us, cleanse us from sin and restore us to his image so that we really can be being that holy of holies with yes. him and so being united in this in this belief really helps us not to just think that we can live any old way yes we can always ask for forgiveness god will always restore us yeah. but the end goal is to transform us to a, a place where just like the heavenly sanctuary we're rid of sin right. and we are clean and pure before him mm -hmm. amen noble thought jamie yeah. Well, what stuck out to me was the text says he is also able to save forever those who draw near to God. Mm -hmm. And he's given us his word. And in this word is his promises. And that means each and every one of us can claim those promises for our own. Mm -hmm. And Amen. that's that personal relationship with Christ. There's so many people. Thank you for sharing that. There's so many people who don't understand that God is on their side. Yes. yes. That God loves us with an immeasurable and unfailing mm -hmm. love. Yeah. He is not trying to keep us out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's trying to bring us in, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And one of the gifts he gives us, which is another area of unity and faith, is Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Sabbath is a time to rest in him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize that many Christians may not understand the Bible Sabbath the way that some of us do. Mm -hmm. but, and they may say, well, I rest once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's talk about that and whether the Sabbath is an important aspect of, of unity of faith. Shall we? Let's go back to Genesis. And uh, let's see. Is there someone hasn't read for us yet would like to read? Everybody read? All right. Yeah. Jason, would you read for us up, up above? Up above. My pleasure. Yes. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day for all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. Amen. So it tells us that in the very beginning, he blesses the day and he sets it apart as holy, call, calls it a day to rest in mm -hmm. him. Hyperspace forward to the giving of the commandments. Fourth commandment says, Remember, remember. remember. Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath day. day. Nicole, why important. do you think he begins with the word remember? He doesn't say, remember you shall have no other gods before me. Remember not to take my name in vain. Or remember don't make graven images. Why do you think he 
he gives the word remember when he talks about remember the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Because he knew the event from the beginning and that there'd be a, a movement to change his Sabbath day to something else. Mm -hmm. And so he's telling those who worship him and who love him to remember that I've set this day, this particular day apart for you to be with me and not any other day of the week. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to agree or add to what Nicole said? Uh, Travis? I agree with that, but I also believe that um, in Exodus, he says, I'm your creator. Mm -hmm. And Jesus wants to work, uh, work in us and recreate us, as Trisha Lee was talking about, transform us, recreate ah. us. Mm -hmm. And it's a weekly day to remember the great things that God has done, the promises of yeah. God, a reflection, so to speak, on his grace and goodness. So he both knows that, that many will forget. But he, he also is saying, there's a huge blessing for you here. There's a wonderful blessing. And in fact, if you read the Gospels, Jesus is constantly healing mm -hmm. and blessing on the Sabbath day. That's right. Trisha Lee. We talked about the deception that can come from not knowing how Jesus comes back. But we're also told in prophecy that there will be powers that try to change God's laws and his times. Yes. That's and right. it's important to remember this. I think that God wants to just highlight because there will come a time when people try to change what his law looks like and change times. Mm. And I think it's important to realize it's not just a suggestion. Mm. Um, it's more than that. This is very important to God um, because it's really a, a stamp and seal of his character. And it's important to be united in that because there will come a time when not understanding this really becomes a test of our faith and our loyalty. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I do believe, as someone has said, if a person has that constant loving relationship with Jesus, mm -hmm. when that issue becomes clear, they'll take their stand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to follow Jesus. Doesn't it say in Revelation, they follow the Lamb wherever, wherever he goes? goes. Um, so, but that's why we need to study. And I want to ask a, a personal question for someone here, because some of you may have grown up understanding about the Bible Sabbath, mm -hmm. but perhaps viewing it as a uh, re religious uh, obligation mm -hmm. rather than the, Travis talked talk about that huge blessing of remembering who we are and we have a creator and that he wants to bless us and transform us. Would someone like to share uh, when you came to the place where you understand, understood what a blessing Sabbath was to you from God? We've got 17 hands raised. <laughs> Nicole, let's start with you. This is an important topic, isn't yeah, it? No, it is. mm -hmm. um, I realized when I had kids okay. how important the Sabbath was because I work a lot during the week. And so Sabbath is a day that not only do I come apart and spend time with God, but I spend time with my family. And I think that he's very instrumental in making sure that there's a day that we have with him, but also to read just... As Travis said, to regenerate and recreate who we are in him and seeing my kids and their love of the Sabbath helped me to realize this is an awesome day. Yeah. <laughs> and so All right. So good. being a parent and, mm -hmm. and seeing what's happening with your children, Gladys? I'm a teacher, so I teach the whole week. And Sabbath for me is like a time to be taught, <laughs> to okay. sit down and hear another perspective and relate mm. with uh, people my age. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than just the little Rather ones. The little huh? ones. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to challenge us all to, to explore all of the themes of Scripture as invitations. Go back to charity. Mm. Invitations to that relationship. constant relationship. relationship with Jesus. Sabbath can be that. Yeah. In yeah. fact, if we're just observing a day without Jesus. Yes. We missed it, didn't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. but there's one last theme in Scripture, and it is the theme that death is not the end. Mm. Mm. Death is not the end. Amen. We have hope beyond the grave. And I realize there may be some different perspectives that people have about death, even among the Christians, but we can agree that death is not the end. Yes. Mm. Now, back to Jason, what you said about the second coming. We want to avoid the danger of being led astray, right? Mm -hmm. But could you read for us from John 11, verses 11 through 15, where Jesus is addressing the issue of death. We'll just look at a couple of verses. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, John chapter 11, verses 11 through 15. These things he said, and after that he said to them, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go, that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, 
he will get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Mm. And what happens, Jason, when he goes to Bethany? What does Jesus do when he gets there? He resurrects Lazarus from the dead. He does. He wakes him up. He wakes him up. Now, I want you to notice several words Jesus uses describing death. He speaks about sleep sleep. sleep and Resurrection. And waking up, right? <laughs> so I want someone to go to John chapter 5, verses 27, 28, 29. John chapter 5. Let's take a look at which verses would be to read there. John chapter 5. Let's read verses um, 28 and 29. Mm-hmm. Samuel, could you read that for us? So now I'll be reading from the uh, New King James Version. Do not marvel at this. For the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So death is asleep, but Jesus says, I'm going to wake people up. Now, there's a lot more we could talk about there. But if someone says, well, I don't think it's going to be like that or like this. Could we just agree that death is not the end and that we need to study the Bible so we don't get deceived? We don't get deceived. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some themes here. Summarize what you've learned. What have you learned from our discussion today? Mm. Yes, Samuel. Salvation is not an end, but a beginning of a new life in Christ. All right. Salvation is not the end, but the beginning of a new life in Christ. Someone else? Yes, Gladys? That everything is made easier when you have that constant connection with Christ. I would challenge that a little bit and say... not Easier on... in the sense of facing okay. whatever comes your way. I, I would say... Every... Easier on... <laughs> okay, I would say everything is made possible. Okay. Yes. It is impossible <laughs> without that constant relationship, relationship yeah. with Jesus. And as we're talking about oneness in Christ and unity in faith... We could spend all of our time squabbling about little details. I'm not saying we shouldn't study the Bible. But if we squabble about details and disconnect from a living relationship with Jesus, we could be the most theologically educated lost people. That living relationship with Jesus also gives us wisdom to discern the dangers and to discover new truth that will not only protect us, but enable us to share that truth with those around us. Oh, I long for that constant living connection with Jesus, don't you? It's a gift for us as we open our hearts to him. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for the beautiful truth that you are loving us with an immeasurable and unfailing love. You, you're drawing us to yourself. And, and I pray that we would live in a state of readiness and oneness with you and with each other. Constant relationship with Jesus that will bless not only our lives, but those around us. We pray it in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. You say, this isn't theoretical. This could change my whole life. And the answer is, amen. Transform living a new life in Christ, not just for you, but go out and be a blessing to those around you. 